What is curling? From its humble 16th century Scottish origins to its current status as a loved Canadian pastime, it has become a sport that can connect us together. Even as COVID tried to separate us, we didn't let that stop us from pursuing the joy of watching the rock travel down the sheet. At Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club, we want to be a place you can come to build those bonds. Our state-of-the-art facility, diverse dining options, and friendly staff are here to create the perfect atmosphere for you to enjoy the sport you love and to connect with others who share our passion for curling. Developing connections, fostering experiences, and making friendships. Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club. and welcome to the U21 Ontario Provincials. This is the women's third draw. We have Team Markle versus Team Akers, both undefeated teams at 2-0. and oh. The lead on Team Markle is Sadie McCutcheon, second Scotia Maltman, Vice, Evie Roberts, and Skip Julia Markle. And on Team Akers, we have lead Maya Sharp, second Isabel McLean, Vice, Isla Thompson, and Skip Ava Akers. This is... An exciting game. My name is Sam Steep. Lorietti is joining me this afternoon. Hi, Lori. Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me with you today. Well, thanks. I know you came to watch, but I appreciate you coming to join me. Well, it is in my backyard. I literally walked here. <laughs> Cold walk. <laughs> Cold outside. But, uh, yep, these are the last two undefeated teams in the provincial. There is a four-way tie at one and one and two 0 and 2 teams. So the women's draw a little bit closer together. Well, this should be a great game. Absolutely. The Team Akers coming off of the U18 bronze medal at Nationals. Yeah, so no rest for the team. They no. basically got home from Thunder Bay and came right here. Yeah, that uh, they were at the Ontario Winter Games. That was where they won a again, I believe. So no rest for the Wicked. They've had a long season. These juniors start all the way into early September and play much longer than the men and women do. Unless, of course, you're at the Scotties or the Briar. But very long season, especially for most of these Young ladies are students, whether it's last year in high school or in university, so. I was thinking about that, how they get all the time off to curl. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. 
<laughs> very uh, understanding teachers. Yes. That's when you become a young adult, you need to hopefully find a very understanding boss. Yes. That's, uh, that's the way it goes, as you know, Lori. Looks like a very open end. Yeah, so Sam, you've done all the games so far. Mm. Have you found that this has been pretty normal for the first end? Yeah, I, there's been one game that uh, a team threw the center guard without hammer. But 10 end games, I find this fairly common. A little more common in U21 curling than men's and women's. But at the Scotties all week last week, we've seen a lot of blank ends in the first. So. Yeah, everybody just getting their feelers out. Yeah. Yep, especially early in the event. Now we're on game three. Most teams will know draw paths and how hits react and all that fun stuff. Team Markle's already played on this sheet once. This is their second game. So, Sam, would you say these would be two of the favorites in the field? I do. I do think these are two favorites. Team Markle coming off of an Ontario Scotties appearance, losing, I believe it was the C semifinal. And... Uh, learned a lot there as I talked to them about that and uh, obviously Ava Akers coming off of U18 Nationals and Ontario Winter Games and they were at La Nationals the year before that so a ton a ton of experience and the rest of the teams that are here not to count anybody out of this provincial but uh, younger teams here in the U21 level now not a lot of teams that are about to age out other than uh, on Team Markle, there's a, a couple of players, but that's about it. It's a very young provincial this year. Oh, that's good, actually. Yes. The future will be bright for Ontario. Yes, it is. I kind of saw the surge as I was doing a couple junior events last year in the U18 level, and you saw the decent amount of teams playing, but nobody was in the U21 level. So all those U18 teams are slowly coming up to U21. It's good to see. Yes, I have a few of the kids that I've coached in the past here this week, and it's really, that's why I came over. Oh, very exciting. Is to watch some of, some of my kids out there playing and participating, and it's really been fun. That's awesome. Across the other sheets this afternoon, we have Team Langford versus Team Daigle. We have Team... Ocoin versus Team Parkinson and Team Johnston versus Team Madden. Team Madden and looking for their first win as well as Team Dale. In this provincial, it's a round robin. You, two losses is about the max you want to have to compete for the top three spots. Sam, do they have room for tiebreakers in this event? I think they do. I think they do. I don't think the format has changed since I've been in juniors and they had a tiebreaker draw. It was normally during the banquet, which is unfortunate for the players, but rather play a tiebreaker than be eliminated. Absolutely. Yeah, so. They are doing the last stone draw mm -hmm. as well. Yes, just in case there are three or four teams tied. Can only throw, only have one tiebreaker game. So that's, right. that's why it's all important at a young age to start learning the draw to the button because not only in provincials, but at almost every single event you play in, a draw to the button is whether you are going to be in playoffs or not. That rock not rolling into the rings. Team Markle without Hammer deciding to just draw away from that corner guard. Looks like they're okay with the blank. Yeah, that rock is really close to the ring. So if anything went wrong, you certainly don't want to give Team uh, Akers a chance to get two. So just drawing the play away makes sense. Yeah. So Lori, how long have you curled here at the Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club? That is a great question. At least 12 years, I think. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And they've been doing a great job with the ice, I mm -hmm. see. Yeah, they, uh, um, Rob Matheson had got some help here this week, and but much needed as he's also running the event basically as well. So he's been doing a lot of running around. He's the reason why the live stream is here, convincing Shiltworks to 
bring their equipment here and show everybody at home. It's a big sweep just to make oh, contact. Dear. Just well, gets enough. Yeah, great sweeping by Maya. Um, as you know, this ice very release sensitive. Yes. Yes. Well, they did do a little touch to the rocks just before the event. Mm. So I played here on Tuesday night, and there was definitely a lot of late finish. Mm -hmm. Still late finish. It looks like the break point when they're drawing to the T line is roughly just before the hog line mm -hmm. in most paths. And that's what I've seen most of the day yesterday and today. Yeah, it's, it's a great surface, honestly. I said the surface really makes the consistent good players look consistent and good. <laughs> sometimes when you go to clubs that are frosty or slow and sometimes doesn't uh, help the stronger teams. So. How have you been finding the slide path as it gets near the 10th end? Because that's something like in club play here, we only play the eight ends. So wondering how it's holding up. Uh, it's good. They do a little, they touch it a little in the fifth end break, uh, which I think helps. I do think the fastest that it gets here is about 15, five ish with sweeping. And uh, it doesn't slow down much. Maybe drops into the 14s near the end of the game. Yeah. But the teams have really picked it up quite well especially on this sheet. I mean, if you're here to win, you're probably watching the stream sheet uh, when you're on your time off, right. just because this is where the finals is, are gonna be played and need to know rocks and keep a rock book and all that fun stuff. So everyone at home can see the coaches on the ice as they have changed the coaching rule in the U21 and U18 level now. You're allowed to have coaches' interactions as this rock is over curling on Ava, and they're not going to save that one. So I've noticed that side of the sheet. Anything soft, it just really is curling hard because she threw a decent amount of weight at it. It wasn't yeah. bored. But uh, again, the coaches get to have interactions in the ends, but their clocks continue to run. Okay. So coaches have to be particular to when they do it and how long they do it for and so they're allowed each one per end one per end so same as u18 yeah okay yeah what do you think of that format uh i really like it at the u18 level because things can get really slow mm -hmm. just because of the lack of experience and skipping and all of that you know u18 level generally is learning just like every other level but you're learning the basics at the u18 level and sometimes uh, things get really slow when coaches only have two timeouts and can't talk to their team. This format, they get to talk in between ends. They get to talk about end goals and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it really does help develop the, the young curlers of today to get ready because as we all, as you know and I know, the skill gap from juniors to men's and women's is very, very big. And I think this helps a lot to get them ready for that step forward. Yeah, I agree. It's it's definitely a challenge for coaching when I'm out there. <laughs> the it, it's brutal. Yeah. The cold, it's so cold. It is cold. Oof. You're not moving. You're sitting in, a, as you can see, Jody is a, yeah. in a, looks like her two winter coats. <laughs> I had a minus a jacket that's meant for minus forty, mm -hmm. and I would wear that, and I would still be shivering. Yeah. I I did coach one team earlier this year, and. Uh, the rules were the same as it is here, and I, I was quite cold out there, and uh, I normally don't get cold, so. Um, very difficult for the coaches to stay warm, but. Yeah, I'm so with that rock sliding a little deep, there's a chance here to get out of the end still with a blank? Yeah, or is this lo Looks like she's throwing it for one. Look, this is last rock. Yep, last rock. Trying to make contact. It looked like a little bit of motion inwards. Uh -oh. She did that on the first rock as well. At least eliminate one, and she okay. does. Oof. Crisis averted. That could have been two very quickly. So Team Marco yeah. goes up one nothing after a steal of one in the first end over Team Akers. Team Akers does have Hammer going to the second. And we've seen a lot of comebacks on this sheet, Lori. And I've been saying a lot of 
10 ends is a long time yes. to marathon. And we've seen teams this week already come back from 5-1, 6 nothing after three, four, five ends to come back to make the make the other skip throw their last rock. So no lead is safe right. in a 10 end game. You just need to be patient with Hammer. And I'm sure both these teams well coached know that, but. That's why I kind of love it. <laughs> yeah, I am a fan of the 10 end game. I'm also not a sweeper though, so. <laughs> Hey, look, they're all showing pictures of them at the gym and exactly. working out. They know what they're doing. They uh, <laughs> they can do it. Yeah, it's what they train for all summer. That's right. <laughs> it does bring the fitness aspect yes. into it. Also, the mental okay. component, because those last three ends after that two-hour mark, that's where I find a lot of people make mental mistakes. Correct. I 100% I agree, and that's when the... Even at this young age, training in the summer and getting prepared mentally, physically for the season, especially how long it is, um, making sure your body's ready. Someone who's been through injury, you know, two or three years ago, and coming back from that, knowing how strong you need to be, where your joints and your muscles, and not pulling a muscle, all that fun stuff. At the junior level, when you didn't stretch before games because, you know, your body felt fine. And now when you get to your mid-20s and then you get into your 30s, and, you know, ask Russ or Glenn Howard who can't slide anymore. That's right. I mean, he has had the longest career in the, ever in competitive curling probably, but still. So Team Aker is throwing the corner guard here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think, I think they threw it because that yellow slid to the back eight foot on Sadie McCutcheon. It looks like there's a fair bit of curl already yeah. is what I'm seeing. Even that corner guard is maybe over a little bit too, too far. far. Yeah, you try to get the corner guards in line with the eight foot yeah. relatively, but. Perfect weight. Yeah, great weight. And I mean, as you know, the, the club slanted a little bit towards sheet four <laughs> or five. Yes, I do know that. Not to tell everybody all the secrets <laughs> in the world, but. Oh, there's lots of little secrets oh, yeah. out here. There is. I, Got the opportunity in my junior level to play here in mixed doubles and in, in four person. I really enjoyed it. But uh, yeah. yeah, you learn a little a thing or two about the sheets. Well, they have their tendencies, yes. that's for sure. Just like every club. And even one side versus the other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, at, depending where you are, at, depending what club you're at, yeah. it feels like different clubs from yes. one side to the other. Yes, I like to think of it as four quadrants. Yeah, I like that. That's and right. that's how my brain processes yeah, reading the ice. Because it's not just cookie cutter. It's yeah. not mirrored. So. Yeah, no, it isn't. It's not consistent. Even the best ice in the world, uh, it's two different sides of the sheet. Rocks react differently in different paths. That's why front enders get paid the way they do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a good hit and stick by Maya. Looks like Team Marco came in with a game plan of being rather defensive. Obviously helps that they stole one in the first, but no center guard up for Sadie, so now they're just gonna hit everything, I imagine, for the rest of the end. Well, right now they're set up again for a force, so they're probably feeling pretty happy. They definitely came in with the advantage playing on this sheet on game one. Oh, that's true. And so they had to play blue rocks. Now they're on yellow rocks, but still it was, they've mapped the sheet out already. Sweep to touch the rock. Yeah. This seems like a theme so far. Yeah, for team, team Akers is getting a lot of curl out of yeah. their rocks. And she had plenty of weight on that hit. Yeah, she too. did. That looked like normal. So I like this call by Team Markle using the one in the top 12 as a guard. Mm -hmm. This should curl really nicely around. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like you said, there's such late finish here that you can draw around a rock in the top eight foot, basically. So teams realizing that the, even though it's in the rings, you can use those as guards. Sweeper's calling heavy early. So I had a 14-2 on that. 
Should really close, close. Close to back four, back eight, wait. So speed is great. Yes. And it's been consistent. It hardly, hardly drops down. I love that. Yeah. Very good conditions for these athletes. Oh, interaction. We'll have our first coach's interaction. What do you think he's going to call here, Sam? Not sure. I did like the double. Me too. Could be talking about weight or which direction they're coming at. The freeze just shrinks the scoring area. Absolutely. In the second end of a 10 end game, it just yeah. seems. Even if she doesn't get the double and makes the hit and roll, like they did put that corner guard there for yeah. a reason. Yeah. It's a long roll, but it it, yeah, it definitely would be better than the freeze. This is when I wish the coach had a mic on. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can find one for the weekend, but. So yeah. that was interesting. The whole team doesn't come down. It was just the skip with the yeah. coach. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they do, but yeah. like I said, the clock keeps running, running, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, very important to use time wisely. I wonder if he was even talking about the ice for the hits. Like maybe he's seeing something and wants to make sure she's giving the right amount of ice. Yeah, yeah I agree. They have had a lot of over curls. Yep. And I think that would have been mentioned as this does is close to the double. Looks like they wanted to play the hit and roll to the corner as they kept sweeping that. But that's still a much better situation than it was. So. It does look like Gord asked for more ice and it was much closer. Mm -hmm. Did hit and stick around, so good adjustment. Evie being asked to make the hit and roll back in front of that yellow stone. Trying to finish it a little bit. Wants to stick around. It's trying to. Does it spin in? It does not. No. That inside out path has been rather consistent both, both yesterday and today. So if you overthrow a rock here, obviously it doesn't tend to break as much. And that could have been why it under curled. Isla Thompson looking to hit and stick. Good sweep to make contact. Very good sweep, because that was a 9-4. Plenty of ways. Yeah. So Both. maybe just not quite getting out to the broom. Yeah, either that or they just need a little bit more mm -hmm. ice. Yeah, if you start seeing that tendency of over curls, just, I think, just open it up a little bit, the broom, and try to get those hit and sticks. They're so crucial. Yeah, you never like to give free peels or free draws. And is very important. Maybe a little bit of an over adjustment yeah. from Abby getting rolled out on her first one. So sticks around and all of a sudden a chance for team makers to create a two opportunity. Yeah, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. This is game three, so I imagine Ava knows how her team is throwing on this ice, even though they haven't been on this sheet. Um, so it's surprising that they've had a, as many overcurls as they've had. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you have to factor in a little bit of nerves. They probably realize this is a pretty key game. Someone's going to go 3-0. and That could be part of it. Yeah, it's early in the competition, but this could be the game that determines who gets the bye to the final or not. That's exactly it. That was a great draw, like really, really nice line on that. Yeah. Little deep, but it's sunk in there. Oh yeah. At least from our vantage point. Yeah. No. We it, are not behind the sheet. No, we're just watching on the screen, just like you guys are at home. But a lot of the times, I don't like this call because normally it is a blue stone in front of a blue corner, uh, a blue corner guard, and a blue stone in the rings. And a lot of times you see hack waiters and you just tap the opponent's stone in. Yes. Now, advantage, it's your 
rock, so it's not as risky. Tempting to throw the freeze, though. Yeah, clearly Julia thinks she can see enough of it. I would imagine it'll be a little fresh out here, too, on the end. Yeah, they called 11 out of her hand. well thrown yeah so, so they could see a lot more than we thought yeah, <laughs> yeah. almost almost stuck around yeah but another chance for Ava to draw around the corner guard try to see if the, she stays above T line not a hundred percent sure what team mark will do other than try to make the corner freeze yeah, she should have a great idea, line and weight, and the sweepers as well for judging. Eva Aker's first rock of the second end. Line looks great. 15 1 on that. that. Should be perfect. Uh, they swept end to end and it goes foot deeper than they wanted to, probably, but still fully buried. Yeah, yeah great, really great shot. Yeah. If they left it a hair higher, there was the potential for the jam, yeah. which would have been nice. Yeah. Yep, so now Julia has to decide whether she plays the freeze or the run back. I think you would often see the freeze here. Yeah, even like if she tapped it a foot, really yeah. good, sit right in front of it. Yeah. But I'm sure on um, that on that rock for the draw for the sweepers, it probably was considerably lighter out of her hand than the rock previously, which was kind of there on its own. So they probably thought they had to go to end to end, but it just shows how strong their sweeping was. Yeah. Yeah, this is very much sweeper's ice. Um, which is the best. Which is awesome. Yeah. As a skip, it feels really good because you can throw top 12 and you can throw T-line and your sweepers can, can navigate it the way they want to. That's why ice conditions like this and you can throw board weight, and bring your sweepers into oh, every single so shot. Good. It's very fun. Julia taking like two inches or three inches less line than Ava Akers did. Trying to get it to curl so she doesn't bounce off too much. That's a great that shot. is a great shot. Well, nothing to do there except take your one. Yep. So that just shows like that little extra sweep on um, on Ava's first, just that little bit too deep. Yeah. Yeah, it was a foot higher, even if you show a quarter of it, like you said. Um, the freeze is a lot harder. Now, if you're making Julia throw corner freezes around corner <laughs> guards all game, you're in a good position. Exactly. Interesting the path they take, they're taking. It's a foot more ice, mm -hmm. so it'd be going to be basically brand new. A lot of teams would maybe play the draw to the button path. I would agree. This feels like it's going to be a bit of a guess. Yeah. Especially their draw to the button, Ava pinned it, so it's, uh, I think you know the path, but this is the path they chose. Last rock in the second end needs full eight foot for their one point. Sweepers are not touching it. Normally not a good sign. It does slide too deep. Going to be a steal of one for Team Marco. Team Marco goes up two to nothing over Team Akers. Team Akers keeps Hammer going into the third. Just like the first end, though, it's a marathon of a game. It's only two right. nothing. Yep. Just keep it close. Mm. She, they would love to score in the next end, though, just to stop the bleeding. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Even if it's one, yep. keep that game in that tight range. Exactly, and and with the five rock rule, the no tick rule, stealing happens a lot more often. 
especially at the U21 level. Right. Yeah. Like you say, no lead is safe, really. Yeah. Let's see if we have any updates. Team Daigle taking three in the first end over Team Langford takes a three nothing lead. Team Old Point up one to nothing over Team Parkinson. And Team Johnson, Team Madden blanked their first end. The teams with one loss is one loss already feels like must wins. And both teams that are 0-2 basically know that they have to go undefeated the rest of the way if they want to have a chance in the top three. Sadie McCutcheon putting it right into the rings. It's so nice having a consistent lead. Yes. They just, my favorite saying is leads can't win you the game, but they they can definitely lose <laughs> you the game. It's so true. So uh, with how important sweeping in our sport is now and consistency of the lead and second position, it's just uh, nowhere to hide anymore. I think the best example is Glenn Howard tried to play lead at the beginning of this year when he was uh, had his injury and Scott was throwing skip stones. And Glenn, not as consistent as Tim at the lead position, obviously. It's Tim. not interesting. Yeah. And lead isn't for everybody. No. You really have to have a special mindset when you play lead. And I remember when I played that position, my goal was to be as close to 100% every game and if and because the you can pretty much figure out what your percentage is at lead because the shots are just a little bit more predictable yeah. uh, a little bit more basic so it was very easy to know mm -hmm. but that was that was the goal i like that because at a, a u21 age and you're like oh i'm just a lead i'm throwing a oh. guard i'm throwing a draw and you, you can't have that mindset you need to be like sadie perfect perfect yeah yeah, this is a great call by Ava. Just ignore that situation for now. Get one in. You put the corner guard up. Let's use it. You I can agree. deal with that middle later. They are nice and tight together. Yeah. Now, if that rock slid into the top 12, it would be interesting to see if they would have hit it or not. But can't touch it now. I find a lot of teams, especially when they're learning the basic strategy of five rock rule, get boxed out in the center because they're not, they don't throw the run back as soon as they can or they right. don't hit and roll. And, uh, you know, these two teams, obviously two of the most more experienced teams in the field, but they understand not getting boxed out. Both ends that Ava's given up steals, she's had makeable shots for one. That's right. And that's all you can ask for as a skip is yeah. to have a shot that you can make to score. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she hasn't made them yet, but... Yeah. She will. She will, yep. That's why they're 2-0. and oh. Sometimes it's just a slow start. So Julia's decided not to play the chase on that shot. That was a lovely draw put in there by Maya. Opting to go around everything, I think. Yeah, I don't mind this call. I think if it was like 4-0 or 3, yeah. even 3 nothing, you might see the pack weight chase. But this does just as well. If you can put this top four foot buried, so, you put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Yeah. So Sam, when I was talking about the quadrant. See, now what I'm seeing with this quadrant is how much it's curling. Mm -hmm. We saw it in the first end. We're seeing it again. That had a fair bit of weight too and still over curled. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've seen a lot of over curls the last two days count how many guards have been crashed on and uh, it just seems like uh, you know depending on how the thrower throws it, it just seems like skips aren't giving enough ice uh, in my opinion and some teams adjusting too late to where they're already down and probably not going to win now already making hit and sticks which is the adjustment after the first two ends well thrown by Isabel 
Yeah, they might just be settling in now. Yeah. As a skip, some of the most frustrating things is not knowing where to put the broom. And that's usually because your throwers in front of you are throwing it differently. They're not being consistent. So then it's like, I don't even know where to put it for myself, let alone the rest of your team. This looks very close. Almost, Almost perfect. So the more consistent you get with your release and your throw, the easier it is for your whole team to, your sweepers and your line callers to react to it. Yeah, I think as a thrower, what I would like to hear is throw it the same and I'll adjust the ice. So that's a little tip yeah, for like skips it. out there. Yeah. Every player has their own tendencies, as long as it's consistent. And that's, that's right. When it comes into play. Looking for the roll in, but it will roll out to the edge of the 12 foot. Some blues accumulating in the rings. When you get to the top level, like Rachel Holman, she has two different releases. She has a straight through release and she has a normal release. And not everybody does that. It might be just Team Holman. Explain to me what straight through is, Sam. Oh, I'm, in my opinion, you pop the rock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. It might not be. I imagine she releases it. They just say it so often. I does. thought, what I does know. that actually mean in her mind? Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah, it, they probably have a different oh. definition. This looks really what good. What a beautiful roll. Great shot by Evie Roberts. Robert, yeah, my bad. Anyways, uh, I always like to think of what your problem stone is, and that problem rock has been that tight center guard that Sadie threw at the beginning of the end, and they haven't yet to hit it, now they have to. Would like to see two yellows disappear here. If you're a Team Maker fans. Team Maker's fans. Well done. Really good. Didn't quite get the other one out, but that's okay. They're sitting second shot. From our vantage point, Sam, it looks like she can see a fair bit of that one in behind the corner guard, but they're not looking at the chase at all. What do you think? Yeah, interesting. Maybe up to nothing. They don't want to look at it. I think you would hate to throw a hack at over curls and you nose them into the rings, but these two teams being as good as they are, you can't think about that. Right. And you do have to play it with enough weight that if you did hit the guard, you're not going to punch it in. Yeah, exactly. But that's what she called. Yeah. Might get lucky on the side. Almost. Oh. It's a co more conservative call. I definitely would have probably played the chase with hacker board weight. And right. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah. And like worst case, you tick the guard, you roll in maybe. Yeah. But makes the peel. Two great throws by Evie. And now eight team anchors looking for separation in their stones. This rock's going to overcurl. Pretty flat double. Yeah. Probably yeah. not there. It's close though. Yeah, it was great to hit and stick, sitting two. If the double isn't there, even if they could roll the rock over toward it and perhaps have a double on our next one is a good option. Yeah, definitely want to group the stones. Yeah. Coming this way, the inside out, you tend to roll lower when you hit the rock. When you contact the rock, you tend to roll lower, which to me means they're not playing the double because you're going to roll too low and, and you're going right. to miss the... The rock in the on the button. Julia's first rock here in the third end. Looks 
looks really close for the hit and roll. Does punch that blue one over to the edge of the forefoot. Yeah, if Ava could just hit this rock and roll a couple feet to the left as we see it, that'll be amazing separation. There'd be no double available. Uh, Julia had a nine second throw on that, so that's probably why. I think she hit it in a good spot, just yep. maybe a bit too much weight. Yeah, for the roll, a bit too much weight for sure. Not enough weight for the double, it's right. kind of a mix in between. Right. Yeah, if Ava could roll to the S in distillers, great full eight foot, means there will be no double and she should have a shot for two to tie the game. First things first, hit and stick, then worry about the roll. rolled to a sneaky spot. It is a good spot. Tough double. I guess the downside is Julia can roll in front of your rock and be shot stone. Almost like a hit and freeze. Right. A pretty good outcome for not the not the called shot anyways. Didn't want to roll in, wanted to roll out, but that's okay. Well, as we know, these hit and rolls are hard to make perfect. Yes. The perfectionist in me wants it made perfect every <laughs> time, but um, they're not easy. One of the hardest shots in curling, really. I know everybody always says the freeze is the harder shot. We seem to think sometimes it's the hit and rolls. On consistent ice like this, freezes in my eyes are generally pretty easy. Obviously, freezes get harder the harder ice conditions you're in. But. This looks close for the roll. Really nice. Really nice shot. Does Ava Aker still has a shot for two? Yeah, what weight would you like to see on this one, Sam? I'm a big fan of board on almost every single hit but she has a pretty I tight ice, so I don't imagine that's what she's throwing. Looks like probably control weight would be close with that line. Yeah, I would agree. It looks a little snug to me, the broom, and she doesn't have a lot of separation, so I'd love to see her bring the sweepers into it a little bit more, throw a little bit less, open that broom up a bit. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a finessey little shot. But last rock here in the third end. Ava Akers trying to get her two points. Great sweep. Very good sweep by Maya. And Team Akers ties the game 2-2 after three ends. Team Mark will bring Hammer into the fourth. And the way she chose, she almost rolled out and hit it as thick as she could. That's right. Like, they just got to buy the back one. Yeah. Great sweep to hold that. Mm. Game on. Game on, yep. We had a close game in our last two draws on this sheet. So, very exciting. The men's draw this afternoon. We have Team Hastings. Versus Team Benning on sheet C. Both teams haven't had the featured seat yet. Sheet yet. I'm pretty. That will be streamed. Supposed to be at 8 p.m. I imagine it's going to be around 9. This did get on the ice about an hour late. Well, the ice makers are scraping in between every draw. So... Yeah, things tend to sometimes get a little bit behind. Yeah, it's a lot of curling. And like you just said, the ice makers are busy. They're running when they're out there um, to create good ice conditions, but also try to do it as quick as they can. 
I think the one thing about the coaches being on the ice and the interactions is the meetings between ends tend to be a little bit longer than what the players would do uh, by themselves. And obviously interacting every, a chance to do it every single end and not just two timeouts tends to slow things down just a little bit. And provincials, you know, these are every win's a must win. You're not going to rush yourself if, you, if, if they're giving you the time to use it as a player. You're going to take it. They're not worried if they're on the ice till midnight. If, if, if they, I'm sure they don't want to be, but. <laughs> well, I know they were doing training for the timing at our game on uh, Tuesday. So. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Did you guys run out of time? No, I think it rattled the team we were playing against. They were relatively new. I was sparing. It was in the B level. I love that. And I think, honestly, everything. The, they saw the clocks. I think they got a little bit out of sync. So it only went six cents. We didn't have to worry too much <laughs> about the time, but it was it was pretty funny. That is funny. You know, club curlers are just not used to things no. like that. So, no. Which is interesting because, I mean, at the club, I, KW Granite, we have three draws in the nights that we play and you get you get two hours if you don't start that last end between right. you know 11 minutes to the hour and uh, you don't get to play it so a lot of times people just play six or seven in. yeah but right. uh great shot by sadie mccutcheon drawing to the top four foot around yeah. that center guard just perfect two perfect shots to start the end yeah maya and sadie are definitely have been the mvps on both teams so far and we've got a corner freeze here that looks so good I love it. I used to say it's hard to find a good lead, but <laughs> they seem to be everywhere. What's your opinion on changing the draw, not freezing on the other side? I was just wondering about this call. Yeah. Because my first thought was to go to the go with the other turn. Yeah, so was mine. Because if she ever bounces off here, it's really not good. Yeah, you just create a double a lot of the times, and this Which is is exactly pretty what much happened. what she did. Yeah. yeah. So I think I my gut was to say to come the other turn. Yeah, just a little more tolerance. Exactly. If you throw the same way she just did, you're just double tapping. That's right. Which is totally fine. Which is fine. perfectly fine. So. Yeah, this lets uh, team makers off the hook a little bit with a good shot. Yeah, chance for Isabella to draw the pocket or hit and roll, depending on what they're throwing. They're throwing the hit and roll. This looks very close. So, yeah. so they were sweeping that the whole way, so it looked like maybe they decided not to make the double. They mm -hmm. wanted to play the hit and freeze. Yeah, I would have liked the double there, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. High game. I think if I'm team makers, I'm fine with a blank in this end just because that means you get even ends back with Hammer. We'll have our interaction here with Jody McCutcheon. It's a little bit different here for Team Markle, anyways. Abby comes down to listen to the interaction. Okay. So Team Markle does have Hammer here. They're sitting one, but those blues are all in nice spots. Yeah. I like to call it the control zone or the danger zone, depending on how I'm feeling. Those stones can be promoted so easily. They are a little bit locked, but. Interesting situation for yellow. I mean, I imagine you have to throw the freeze. Well, they have two problem rocks right yeah. now. They have the tight guard is a problem rock. Then you've got the two, which are directly in front of theirs. So your scoring area is very small right now. I don't mind eliminating. They're gonna hit and roll, eliminate one. I think the only issue is your, that blue one that they're hitting is gonna roll kind of towards your yellow shot stone. If you get unlucky, it could roll to frozen. Which That's would right. Your scoring if area. you could save your shooter on this hit, yes. Would you like that? Yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Really like a board weight hit and roll to the rim. Don't think they can crash on the center guard yet. Oh, yes, they can. So it's fine. Good tolerance. Yeah. Well, I've been saying that at the U21 level, tolerance wins you a lot of games because you tend to get more misses mm -hmm. from your opponent at this level. Um, and I've seen teams, most of the teams that are winning, obviously, are missing the right way or the right tolerance. And that was, for Scotia, definitely the right miss. That guard was one of your uh, problem rocks. Yeah. Okay, they're bailing on plan A. Trying to get it to curl to make the other run back. That's pretty close. Ah. It sticks around, it's actually not a bad outcome. And it does. any option here, no. play, it, play the double on these two. Yep, like you said, your problem rocks are the ones in the top eight there. Even if you hit and roll and jam, you have two yellows in the, in the scoring area. Could make the other double. Wants to save her shooter. So maybe a bit of an overcorrection on that one. Yeah. By Scotia. Some teams would throw the center guard here. Well, they are sitting shot rock. On the button. I guess maybe it's a tie game. It's only the fourth. Yeah, and if you don't put the guard perfect. Yeah. Don't want to give up two right after you just tie That's it. That's right. Big sweep just to touch the yellow. Well done. By Isla. So Abby would like to hit this and roll in front of those other two blue shots. They could be problematic. Possible jam. Jam opportunities. Jam opportunities. Yes. Right now, those rocks are her friends, so just roll somewhere in front of them. But unfortunately, a little bit of an overcurl there. Yeah, and this has been consistent with what I've seen every single draw. Is looks like the the throwers are throwing a good rock and and, and just getting overcurls. Yeah, I'm looking at the rotation and it looks great. So Weights have looked good too. Yeah, not an issue there. If I've seen misses with hits and with draws, it's probably been over 90% over curling than right. under curling. So there's a really nice hit. If stick. I'm a, a men's team watching or a, a women's team rewatching this game, I would definitely take note of that because your semi and final <laughs> is going to be on this sheet. Start doing their homework. Yeah, exactly. You all, you want to, it's a marathon. You want to take it one game at a time, but you also need to be, you know, somebody needs to take in this information for when it comes down to those stones. And as we said, we haven't seen an under curl. Until now. Until now. And it's going to go Don't go, go right through between. the hole. You know, that's really tough to do. Curls another half an inch. Yeah, that's just unlucky. When you yeah. see that, you just shake your head and <laughs> yeah. go, really? Yeah. It looks like a well-thrown rock, too. Like, it maybe was. a bit of an over-adjustment as well. Like, that's where, like I was saying earlier, the skip needs to say, I'm I'm going to give you more broom, so throw it the same. Like, it, that needs to be communicated, because if she didn't realize that, didn't recognize that maybe the broom was opened up, and then also made sure she was a bit more positive, the two counteract, so. Yeah, I agree. Communication, tolerance, good strategy is going to win you a lot of games. It's a hard game, Sam. It is. There's so much to think about. The 
these darn Scottish sports. <laughs> Opportunity for Ava not only to get her draw weight, but to sit three here. Almost the same path that she threw her draw for one on the second and through the rings. So, sweepers working hard been, to get it in. It's great sweeping. Could have been an over adjustment a little bit, anyways, yeah. but yeah. I'd much rather her throw that every single time than throw it through, especially as a skip. And as a sweeper, there's nothing, when you can't do anything about it, it's so frustrating. Yeah. So I'd rather head down, go crazy end to end, than watch it. What do they call it, like walking the dog? Yeah, <laughs> it's never a good thing. No. Even as a, the thrower, watching, a, watching your draw just glide through the rings, <laughs> it's like, not the best feeling in the world. So good adjustment by Ava. Another chance for Julia to make the hit and roll in front of those two blue stones. It's gonna over curl. It's trying. It does stick around. Does it stay for anything? It's at least second shot, I think. I mean, no, no point in drawing, might as well hit. Even if you roll out, uh, there's no blank opportunity that they're going to play. I mean, technically there is a shot there. But. Yes. So based on that ice, I'm gonna say she's gonna whip this a little bit. Yeah, oh, she just opened it up. She hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, they seem to have really liked that normal weight-ish, that 9.5 weight, which seems to be what their tendency is. So, I mean, obviously they would have discussed that as a team before the game even started, that they like that weight. So, Ava Akers, last rock in the fourth end, looking to... Hit and stick. Just a fantastic sweep. Good thing she asked for more ice. Yeah, well, when they put the ice right in the middle of the rock, I kind of went, I've been playing here a long time, and that is not ice that I've ever taken on a shot. <laughs> There's always curl, even yep. if you throw it hard. I know. I think maybe... At your home club, you see those edge of the rings just never curl. So you're like, oh, another rock at someone else's club. But mm -hmm. here, it curls everywhere. So There might be a couple tiny yeah. little straight spots. Yeah. But generally. Yes. I, generally, I don't often take middle of the rock no. here. Julia Marco's last rock here in the fourth end, looking to hit and stick, needs to stay in the full 12 foot for her one point. Oh, tried to overcurl, but it doesn't. Great hit and stick. Yeah. Those are the pressured shots you need to make if you want to end up winning this provincial. Team Marco goes up three to two over Team Acres. Team Acres has hammer going into the fifth end. Let's see if we can get an update on the other scores here. Team Langford takes two off of Team Daggle, and Team Daggle is still up three to two with hammer in the fourth end. Team Old Coin is up two to one over Team Parkinson. Team Madden ties the game on against Team Johnson as one one after three ends. Lots of close games so far this afternoon. Okay, Sadie McCutcheon, fifth end. 
up by one, so curious if they will be throwing it short here, Sam. What do you think? Yeah, well, she's calling top four. I would have liked a guard. And looks like that might be what it ends up going to be. You have even ends. I know it's only the fifth. Right. First half of the game, but as a skip, I love managing the scoreboard early. I love keeping even ends yeah. as soon as I can. Yeah, I think the call was to come in, but I love where she put it. Yeah, that's a very good tolerance as a lead to understand what a good miss is. I mean, back eight, and you know the other team is going to throw the corner guard, and that back eight rock's probably going to not come into play for the rest of the end. Team Akers not falling for it. Drawing around that center guard. What a great sweep. That was fantastic sweep. I love that when the two sweepers give themselves a little low five as well. They knew they worked hard for that yeah. one. <laughs> that your, lead, your lead stones get that much harder now that you can't take it off the center line. Oh, exactly. Yeah, you almost want that extra little space. Yeah, you really do, as a skip, have to think about almost not max size, but kind of, to make sure, because it's worst case scenario to tick it off the center, because then your rock also goes yeah. off. Yeah, it's basically a zero. It's basically like you flashed it. Good sweeping to get it by the yellow. Doesn't get by the blue though. Yeah, weight was nearly perfect. Yeah. It's still in a good spot. Yeah, it's still about uh, over a quarter buried, so Two makers can't roll into the center. They can definitely still eliminate this shot. Looks close. Great throw. The battle of the leads are close. Both of these leads, my and Sadie, have been putting on a show early in this game, being very consistent. We could have done stats, Sam. <laughs> Darn, missed opportunity. Yeah, it really was. I love doing stats. Oh, that's good, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count how many times I've curled 60 but still win as a skip just because in juniors, I had the tendency of missing my seven rock a lot and making my eight rock a lot, which you win a lot of games doing that, but you also curl 50 or 60% because you're <laughs> exactly. missing your seven rock a lot. So. But it does show the consistency. I really do enjoy looking at percentages, how efficient you are with hammer, how efficient you are stealing, all of those important stats that make up your miss stat. Right. Do you know I call that a Sam? A Sam? Yeah. Oh, I like Shots that. Shots after miss. Yes. Oh. There you go. I like this aggressive call here, yeah, ignoring that one on the 12 foot, using that stagger mm -hmm. to put a better one in. I agree. Well, I think Ava understands how hard it is to hit and roll. Wow. That's a perfect shot by Isabella. Love right, the call, right the love the button. execution. Yeah. But we've seen it this game. Hitting and rolling is very difficult. Very hard. And if you just hit and stick, then uh, Julia could just draw to the top button. Exactly. Then you have to. Then you're chasing the rest of the end. So you're right, Lori. Very gr a great call. When yeah, when she first put the broom, I wasn't sure if she was playing the counterclockwise hit or if she was playing the draw. So I didn't mm -hmm. say anything. That's a call you don't often see in U21. Mm -hmm. That's a women's and men's call that you see all, more Love often. It. So, well, it just shows the experience level of this team. Very impressive. So, Team Marco looking to make some noise here on these front two. Oh, so close. That was actually quite thin. To make the run double, you probably needed to hit a quarter of the stone. Yes. But uh, still, 
good, leaves your rock in a, in a very good spot in that control zone, so. Unfortunately, you roll to a corner guard. That's, I guess, the only, only downside of that shot. Now, would you ever consider throwing a guard on this situation? See, that's something I've been watching the top level men's and women's teams, just because the five rock rule strategy with hammer is obviously so different than the four rock rule. Great sweeping to not jam the stone. Does sneak into the rings. It isn't second, but. It doesn't get second. That's yeah. why I was wondering. Yeah. Uh, before you were taught to never throw a center guard when you have hammer. And now, I mean, that rock is in such a good position, you almost guaranteed scoring. Very tempting to throw the center guard. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering as well. Yeah. That's what my spidey sense is saying. Yeah, I would have liked it. Just because I knew she wouldn't be able to roll in for second shot. Yeah. I think that's why I went, ooh. Yeah, you're basically conceding and letting Mark, Team Markle sit to yeah. playing that shot. This looks very close. Oh, you know what, though? I just realized they didn't put the score up. So I was thinking. Yes, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, they have hammer, but. Right, so but I was still, thinking because they didn't put the score up yet, I was thinking they were. It's something I've talked to other skips mm -hmm. about just because you see it more often. You see, I was talking to John Epping about this. You see a lot more with hammer throwing the center guard when you have a rock in a good position. Um, almost guaranteed scoring. Obviously, uh, different levels of curling, but. But yes, Team Markle did take one in the fourth end. Evie just hasn't put the score up yet. So that's probably why it hasn't been updated. Had to sweep to get by there and unfortunately slides a foot and a half too deep. It's scary. I don't love drawing around a corner guard, but not a lot of good options well, in this situation. Yeah, it's it is it is tricky when you don't have hammer to be utilizing their corner guard if you're ever deep. It can create such a big opportunity for the opposition. So this is a very precise sweep. Try and roll the second shot if they can. They do. That's actually not that bad of an outcome. Tough for Team Acres to hit and roll and be shot stone. Does change the angles of that those corner guards as well. That could come into play later in the end. Milo's trying to make the hit and roll here. from that other yellow. Does open up your corner guard though. I don't think Team Marco can nose this because I don't think they'll be second shot. No. You don't need at least a half of a rock of a roll. Got to play Julia Markle at the Mixed Doubles Provincials last weekend as she was sparing for Kim Tuck. Right. And she was playing with Wayne, and they're obviously a fun team to play against. Uh, so Julia, I told her at the end of last weekend, I said, you should never miss a draw with a forefoot at Provincials this week. You just did it for really? five games in a row at Mixed Doubles. She laughed, but... Uh, well, that was good preparation. It is. I think it's. This. I think it's great. I mean, it's a different sport. You're, you're. What a great hit and roll. Oh, amazing but, shot. Um, 
you're not throwing to a broom, so optically it is a little more difficult Challenge. in mixed doubles. Um, no one's there telling you if you've popped it or you dumped it. Or it's a lot of feel, but uh, you throw a lot of draws to the forefoot. It, yes, it looks very close. The run back just off nose. Looks like he might be able to get both yellows. Even if she gets one and keeps her blue in the rings for mm -hmm. third shot. We're going to have a coach's interaction. So there is a guard above that blue rock in the top 12 foot. I mean, really, what else do you play at this point? Yeah, I, I guess the only other option is draw right um, under the A and lane way, Oof. which is very precise and difficult. Very precise. But if you get it half buried just there, that's probably the only other call, in my opinion. This does look pretty close to being lined up. It's tempting. Yeah. And honestly, you still will have your shot for one, worst yeah. case scenario. Yeah. But it is tempting. And you're, almost, you're always going to eliminate a yellow. That's right. So even if it doesn't work out, you might be only drawing against one. Mm -hmm. That's a great angle. <laughs> Thank you, Show Works. Just stuff. yeah, that looks pretty lined up in my opinion. Yeah. I think you could sit two pretty often here. Like what is, what is the distance between the yellow and the blue? It doesn't look very... It doesn't look... I don't even think it's over a rock. Yeah. It might be even less than a rock. Oh, well, it's over a rock. Okay. A couple feet. Yeah. So maybe a little bit harder than it looks at that camera angle. I like the other angle better. Yeah. But I'd still angle. probably play it. I'd play it. I think I would as well. I think there's only good outcomes. Yeah. Okay. It looks like they're going to listen to us. Excellent. Yeah. I think that was a good coach's interaction because honestly, that draw looks super tough. It's very precise. It's not a shot that you want to be throwing in the fifth end. No, and then next thing you might be throwing against three. Yeah. If you don't make it perfect, she hit and rolls, and you have to draw four foot against three. Not a fun Not fun. So, Sam, where exactly would you want to hit this? Great question. I think just on the low side of nose, so the side closest to the center line. Yep. So to cross the face by, you know, a half an inch looks pretty close to me. Okay, love it. I'm being the Vic Router here. I trying like it. to like. This is very close. Fantastic, and she didn't have quite enough weight. That actually might have been. Oh, just the worst outcome in that situation, actually. What a shame, because if she hit it exactly there mm -hmm. with more weight, yeah. she makes it easy. And almost rolls her shooter into the race. Yeah. What a great throw. Okay, so it was the right call, just maybe a touch more weight yeah, next time. I was yeah, I was gonna say this This was the only danger in that shot is if you cross the face too much, you're rolling to a center guard. Mm -hmm. and that's unfortunately for Ava Akers what happened because it was a great throw. I think she wanted to hit it a half an inch thicker and she probably would have made it all, made them all go away. But, or like you said, a little bit more weight. Is sitting second and third. However, if Julia can put a really good draw in here, she's going to have a tough one. To yeah, score. where's the best position for this rock? I'll be well, the Vic this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to be in around, well, huh, yeah, in around top four. But you've got to be really careful because you do not want to set up a double here. Yeah, so I, honestly, if it's not if it's not curling a lot, they're better off to leave it as a tight. Well, no, I don't I don't want to say that because she has the run for three. Yeah. Uh, Basically, I like you got to make it real good in yes. a round. Right where Evie's yeah, rock this, is, or right is where perfect. her broom was. If it's, what a shot! It's pretty well done. And now, Do you take on uh, the run double, Sam? I really like. I like it. Okay, I only like it if you make it. <laughs> exactly. Because really, like, the percentage shot is to yes. follow her down and tap it for your one. If you're feeling very confident, I like it just because uh, y if you make contact with one of the yellows, you're max giving up one. Yes. Uh, and the draw is tough. Like, you, to make this draw for one, you kind of have to throw that back four-ish yeah, weight. Yeah, you'd have to tap it. And tap it. Bit, yeah. 
So not an easy shot either. Right. So this would give you the most reward? Yeah. This is slightly more risky, but shot for three. I like that. She just opened her broom up a little bit there. Yes. She asked for more ice, which maybe picked up the memo that we've had some over curls. So looking to make contact with the one on the button. Right. A nose hit is going to be very close for three. Ava Aker's last rock here in the fifth end. Maya needs to back this up. Oh, very good throw. A decent outcome, only giving up one. So close yeah. to perfect. Well thrown, overcurled a half an inch. Yeah, she's disappointed, but that that's a tough shot. It is a very tough shot, but uh, it does show you where Ava's headspace is, mm -hmm. which is very good and, and leads me to believe we're right by saying these are the two of the better teams here this week. Team Markle takes a 4-2 to two lead after five ends. Team Akers will have Hammer going into the sixth. We'll be right back after this short break. What is curling? From its humble 16th century Scottish origins to its current status as a loved Canadian pastime, it has become a sport that can connect us together. Even as COVID tried to separate us, we didn't let that stop us from pursuing the joy of watching the rock travel down the sheet. Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club, we want to be a place you can come to build those bonds. Our state-of-the-art facility, diverse dining options, and friendly staff are here to create the perfect atmosphere for you to enjoy the sport you love and to connect with others who share our passion for curling. Developing connections, fostering experiences, making friendships. Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the U21 Ontario Provincials Women's Draw 3. We are still on the fifth end break, but we'll give you a couple of updates on other sheets. Obviously, you know it is a 4-2 to two lead for Team Marco. Team Akers does have Hammer on our featured sheet. This is the battle of the last two undefeated teams on the women's draw, so a very important match. And when Curlon updates their website, I can update you guys. Team Madden takes a 2-1 lead over Team Johnston after four ends. Team Oldcoin is up 4-1 over Team Parkinson now after four ends. These provincial championships, I mean, you just don't want more than two losses with the round robin record. Top three teams will be in playoffs. Obviously, we have found out that there is a tiebreaker draw, if needed, for both men and women. Very exciting. And on the men's draw tonight, it isn't the featured game, but the battle of the undefeated tonight, Team Malima versus Team McTavish. Ooh, that'll be a good one. It'll be a very fun game. Both teams are the last two undefeated and arguably two of the favorites going into this event. And McTavish's team's only a U18 team. They are, yeah. Very impressive. Tyler is just turned 16, and Nathan and Evan, the second advice, are a little bit older. They're both Evan's first year university, and Nathan is in grade 12. So he's 17, a couple, couple years older, I guess, but... They've had a very successful team uh, season as well. Team McTavish making the U18 Nationals, losing the quarterfinal in the playoffs. They just came back from the Ontario Winter Games where they won silver. That's right. I always like to say win silver. Me too. Yeah. Because I've won silver so many times, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah. In the long run, it you know, when you look back at it, not the couple days after, but, you know, a couple months after, you do feel a lot better about it. I think these days with the level of competition, anytime you can be on that podium, yeah, you are doing very well. I 100% agree with you. It's very hard to be the top three in any event that you play in anymore. So Sadie McCutcheon not throwing the tight guard, which I'm fine with. I believe that was called a top four. But again, a good tolerance. That rock is in the control zone in a good position. A little surprising, Team Akers isn't throwing the corner guard as it's the sixth then, down two. But they have clearly came in here with a game plan. This looks very close. Both leads still on fire. Great. Yeah, I did hear uh, Team Markle, they were wondering if after the mop, if it would speed up. So I'm wondering if they made that adjustment thinking it does. I'm not sure what your experience is at a club. I know at an arena for sure because yeah. the ice surface is a little bit different. What do you think? I think here I've seen a little bit of a difference after the mop. I do think I haven't had times to uh, prove it, but I do think it's a little quicker. The first four draws in a row each lead through their guards in the ranks. Mm -hmm. And I, I think these players are good enough to know what guard weight is all game. So I do think it does speed up on a nice surface like Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club. Yeah, so clearly Julia did want that and she's playing the run through on Sadie's second rock. Yeah. yeah. Really a, a frustrating feeling as a lead. You accidentally throw a guard, then you're getting called to play the run back and you just peel it out. Yeah. Uh, that can be super frustrating. Okay, it's an early chance for Team Akers to split the rings. Or maybe she's throwing a corner. I think she's throwing the corner. It'd be awfully early to try yes. to save your two the whole time. Yes, you would. You would need the other team to not make a perfect hit and roll That's right. six more times. Uh, very difficult. I think they were calling the corner guard, but they were. It is it's sliding. Sliding. Looked like that rock might have tried to stop, but they did sweep it all the way into the rings. And like we just said, now they're going to need six times that the double or the hit and roll is missed to score their two points now. That's right. Just try to group it for now. You've got lots of time to get yeah. out of this. Really important for Scotia to stick around, though. Like you just said, group the rocks. But even if you, 
nose isn't great, but it's better than rolling out. If you hit and roll out, uh, gives Maya Acres or not Maya Ava Acres an opportunity to throw that corner guard. Well, they just decided just to make, make the double, the double now. now. Yeah, yeah great, great shot, great by, shot Scotia. by Scotia. <laughs> well done. If I'm doing my math right, they are throwing the corner, but they, it can't be peeled out now. Yes. So this end, unless there's a zero thrown, most likely will be a blank. Isabella had a little trouble on the landing gear on that one, so. It's the first time I've seen that. Uh, <laughs> that happens to me almost every time I kick out. So. Well, you know, I call, <laughs> I call those throws are artisanal. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That does slide. I see it. I do think they, they threw a new path after the mop and it slides into the rings. For a team that's made a lot of guards already, uh, you, would, you would think they... I'm going to say it is a little bit faster after the mop. Okay. Probably not a bunch. Couple feet, maybe. Couple feet, yeah. For the first few stones being thrown, anyways. Okay, a chance for Scotia to make the hit. Should probably like to save her shooter. Wouldn't mind forcing uh, Team Acres to take one here. Yeah, I agree. After making a great double on her first, this needs a curl to touch it. She just likes making doubles, I guess. <laughs> they swept that straight out of her hand, too. Maybe expected that to curl a little bit more than it did. Mission accomplished, though. Yes. Are you throwing the quarter guard all the way till vice is last, or when do you decide to just hit or freeze? Yeah, I think for sure for the front, the first four rocks, you definitely want to try to get your pieces in the right spot. And after that, if it's not looking so good, you really don't want to be forced to win. And that rock is in such a good spot. At some point, Julia could just say, I'm just going to guard it. Yeah. And then you're in a bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you've got to be a bit careful. Mm -hmm. Such a chess game. It is. That's why, that's why I like it so much, watching and playing. And just when you think you've seen every situation, Sam, what did you think of Rachel Homan's shot where it bounced off the two, the pocket and came back up to sit shot? It wasn't, I've never, I've seen, never seen that. anything like the that. The face that she made is very appropriate <laughs> because that has to be a one. It feels like a one in a million that that happens. <laughs> and, and funny, I said that I was watching the game with my dad at home, and I said, this could roll up into the forefoot. And he goes, well, if it does, it'll just keep going. It'll, it'll, keep, it'll slide all the way through. And I was like, well, and it rolled up into the forefoot. That was wild. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll see that again. <laughs> Very difficult to do, especially for someone who can throw a six-second peel. That's right. So their answers are question. They yeah. decided on Vice Rocks to play yeah. the hit. And this is only the first end of the second half, right. and you're only down two. Uh, it sucks that it's an even end that you're blanking, but see if you can develop a two, two score in the next end. Yeah, I might have been tempted just to throw one more corner. Yeah, I probably would have waited until Vice's last yeah, to hit. Yeah, I think so. But. I think when you look at the scoreboard, sorry to cut you off, okay. uh, Team Marco been the most consistent team so far this game. You know, stealing one, stealing one, getting forced, but still making it for one, yes. and then stealing again. It's yeah. it just, you can tell by how the scoreboard, how consistent they've been so far in the first five ends. Yeah, absolutely. When you look behind you and you see that you've scored four of the five ends, you're pretty happy with yes. where you're at. Yes. So positives, obviously, still positives for both teams. And 
looking forward to see what develops in the seventh end. Well, for sure, and Team Acres has to feel pretty good. They probably haven't had their best stuff yet, but they're still within that two points, yeah. and that's really critical. That's a, almost a, just as good of a feeling. You know you've brought your B game so far, and yeah. it's only a two-point game. Exactly. So They have their team meetings between ends, discuss what they need to do in the last four ends to make this comeback. If you can call it a comeback, it's only two points, but for the comeback win. Isla rolled to a really nice spot yeah. there, way out Sneaky. onto the edge. So a little bit of a new spot for Julia. Yeah, sneaky. Like we said earlier, when Ava had to be way out here for a hit, it does curl here. So very important to keep so your weight up. And yeah, if you're in a new spot, Sam, what is in your guessing a little bit? What is you? What do you like to do? Uh, if it's an end where I don't need to stick around, like it's not important, I throw a lot of weight. I'll throw normal or peel and put the broom on the edge of the rock. Yeah. To make take sure the I, ice reading yeah. out of it a little bit? Yeah. 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 But on hits that need to stick around, I'll throw control roughly like she, like Julia just did. Yeah. Luckily, we're on the nice surface that's very consistent. And so it's not frosty out here like some places that you go to right. the edge of the rocks edge of the rings can be frosty and then it's not as predictable. Here, generally pretty predictable. That curled nice consistently all the way to the, to the nose. Yeah, Ava would love to just hit and stick right here and then hopefully it'll make her blank attempt very easy. Mm -hmm. On our next one. And I have a funny feeling the way the women's score uh, the draw is going we will have a women's tiebreaker I mean there's already right. four, four teams tied at one and one uh, if these two teams win out other than this game like I predict they would uh, probably a big tie for third another great sweep yep. sweepers for team makers has, have been working hard today they've had a few rocks that are curling quite a bit, so. And with the 10 ends, snacks are essential in that fifth <laughs> end break, so hopefully they refueled a little bit. Looks like it. I see some bags on the end boards. <laughs> I called mine the feed bag. <laughs> I like it. It's always interesting. I think Devin Haro on Twitter, when he's there in person, he takes pictures of the snacks that they're eating which I think is quite funny. Yeah. Um, very fun to watch, but you have to fuel yourself. 10 ends is a three hour game. And as sweepers, you're burning, you know, you're burning a ton of calories. Yes. You need to be, you need to stay fueled up. So in the 10th end, when you're throwing that, sweeping that draw for the win, you have enough energy to get it to the top of the button. I forget how long ago it was, but we put on these heart rate monitors and they calculated also the calories burned, and who knows if it's yeah. completely accurate, but we played seven ends and it said I burned 1,100 calories. That seems to be consistent with the Apple Watch. I've seen yeah? I've seen posts of the Apple Watch, oh, a, a 10 end game be over 1,500 calories. Wow, okay, which so is maybe like, it was accurate. For some people, that's almost their daily calorie <laughs> consumption if they're not moving. That's my so. breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it, Lori, I do. <laughs> Yeah. No, live to eat. Sorry. Live yes. Eat. Last rock here in the, the sixth and looking for the blank attempt. A little bit of panic early, but makes it perfectly. Team Acres keeps the hammer into the seventh end. Team Markle has a four to two lead. So while they're having their team meetings, this live stream is only here because of Showworks. They've set up a great setup. Me and Lori have two great big TVs that we're watching this on and good audio, very easy to listen to what's happening on the ice. And uh, 
hopefully you guys are enjoying it at home. And uh, thanks to the Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club for hosting this provincial. We basically get the whole country club. They're up in the ballroom stretching and taking photos. I know. Isn't and it beautiful? It's beautiful. And uh, every event I've ever played here, we've never been able to go upstairs other than to use the bathroom. So, <laughs> or so you there, use the restaurant. Yeah, there must so. not be any big uh, parties and weddings well, yet, but maybe was, on the weekends. Yeah, I was told that uh, the sponsors who sponsored this event with Mohawk College and uh, and Junior Slam Series and other sponsors uh, made it possible to rent out most of the rooms here, which is great to see. Gives the players a ton of room to stretch and to to relax, to stay focused during the game. Unfortunately for Sadie, that rock slides through the rings. Yeah, she's been having a great game so far. That's a bit surprising. Yeah. Again, just sometimes that little mental lapse, we're nearing that two hour window, it happens. It does. Maya's been super consistent too, and the sweepers are backing off of this rock. Maybe everybody's thinking it's going to start to slow down a little bit, so. Could have been commuted, communicated between ends. Yeah, because all of a sudden everybody's just a little bit heavy, even that oh, one. Oh dear. Inch too heavy. Yeah. I don't hate a blank end here. I, I, you know, sometimes I hate wasting ends, especially when you're down, even though you're only down two. But if you blank this end, score two and eight, force a nine, score two and ten, you win the game. Right. I make it sound simple, but after two misses by the leads. The only thing I would counter to that is they are running out of ends a little yeah. bit. And if you can if you can even get two here and then per, I would go hard for a steal in the eighth. Mm -hmm. So what's different, uh, obviously Sadie had a miss, yeah. um, which is unfortunate um, because she has been so good, as you said. Some teams would split the rings, like we saw last end, even though they tried to throw more and slid into the rings. Yeah. Um, now they're throwing the corner guard, guarding their shot stone. Yeah, I love this. Which is a great call. Needs to curl, though. The weight looks great. Just didn't quite get over enough. Yeah, still will be able to hit. It'll be tough to roll in. Agreed. And she's she's saying to roll all the way to the center line. Yeah. Maybe they have a different angle than we do, <laughs> but looks tricky from looks here. Looks very tough. I think a lot of times you're nosing and just creating another corner guard. Do you ever like the draw on this one? Uh, yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't love it. I hate nosing, though. I know, it, right? And and more often than not, you're going to nose yeah, like what yeah. happened to Scotia. That shot was just relatively not there. Yeah. So you're not wrong. The My draw only isn't thought that was, bad. yeah, just she could have put in a, like a really nice one first. Mm -hmm. And get the other team to chase you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because I sort of saw this happening. Yes. This exact situation. This, this was almost always going to happen unless yeah. you hit and rolled out. That's right. And that really gives uh, Team Akers an excellent chance. Early indication, though, is that it's heavy, which is yes. not good. Not good. Because this was a great opportunity. Yes, you here. look for the break point. The break point of the rock, if the weight's close, is before the hog line generally, and it just started breaking at the yeah. top 12. So, wow. Always a little bit heavy there, unfortunately, for Isabella. Both teams been super consistent all game long. This is the first end that we've seen, I mean, flat out zeros. We haven't seen many zeros no, that's exactly all game. Right. So a little surprising. But like you said, three hours of 10 ends of curling, it's hard to stay focused the entire time. It really is. I think sometimes curlers don't get enough credit for what they actually have to endure out there playing in competition. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why the top level curlers, and even you see in the U21 level now that competitive curlers talking to sports psychs. Yes. And because the game relatively is mental, 
mental stability and how strong you can be to stay focused and uh, not only just physically important to, st uh, to stay in shape, but mentally as well. So Team Markle peeled away the corner guard, but there is a tight yellow rock there that they can still use. Yeah, I really like this. Guard. Yeah, I really like this call. They're calling the high guard above the yeah. yellow. Stack them. Yeah. Looks like it's running deep, but good well. call anyways. I believe this was supposed to be a two guard. It might end up behind the T line. Wow. Maybe. Interested to get a time on the next time they throw a draw because it seems to be running a little bit quicker. Four, three different players have just been heavy, but don't often see that. Playing the chase. I love it. When did we start this new terminology, the chase. the chase? Like, yeah. I feel like it's been relatively new. Yeah, I think it is. I, I, I've enjoyed somebody, I don't, I'm not sure who the commentator said was, but they said they're going to try and dig this rock out. Dig of it, yes. Yeah, yes. I, I really enjoyed that terminology as well. Abby's playing the hack, weight, hit, and roll. It's going to be a big sweep for Scotia to get this going to make contact with the top, roll both of them in. It's a very good call to get off that rock at yes. the hog line. Uh, a lot of teams would keep sweeping that. You just nudge it and you roll through the rings and then it's a huge advantage for team makers. The mature teams know, hit it a little thicker, like, you, like what happened. Now there's two yellows in the rings, no corner guards. So great heads up play by Team Marco by Evie. Great chance here to sit two, but the, the early indication is that it was too much weight for what they called. Oh, such a missed opportunity yeah, there. So unfortunate. unfortunate. And I think it's just the weight they decide to throw is, is much heavier than Team Markle. They really enjoy that normal weight hit. And I would, would really like them to see them bring that weight down and bring the sweepers in the play. And in the, their defense, I think they had so many early overcurls that yep. they might have started to overcompensate by that's bringing fair. that weight up a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree that it, that's fair. Might be starting to straighten out a touch. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of undercurls. That might have been only the second one that they've had, so chance here you can roll under that yellow in the top 12 foot and it could act as a guard yeah I'm just thinking like right now it's looking like they're going to be forced so what's another option potentially could maybe tap freeze tap freeze or draw you could just ignore everything and draw to the back yeah. 12 foot maybe a little bit of an over adjustment as this does hit and roll. Not ideal as the rocks are very separated. Yeah, for sure. That's why I'm thinking like figure out how to, you're going to be taking one anyway. So if, if you can figure out how to take two, try to use, even if you tap that rock back a little bit, sat in front of it yeah. to make her shot a little bit harder. Yeah, I, I think I kind of like that better. Yeah, I do too. Because I don't love the idea of only taking one here, so. No, no, definitely not ideal. And you're running out of time in this end. Mm -hmm. Must be cold out there <laughs> if Abby's wearing a sweater and a, she's a sweeper. It is cold, not going to lie. Relatively older building. It doesn't have insulation, yeah. so when it's cold outside, it's cold, cold inside. inside. Now, yesterday, for a brief moment, when it was 16 outside, I'm sure it was just balmy in here. <laughs> it was very nice. I even said when I came in here, someone was golfing the, the winter course. Yes. And uh, I was very jealous. I was like, oh, it's, it's golf season. Yes. And four hours later, there's <laughs> snow on the ground. That's our Mackenzie Hughes par three. <laughs> open year round year round yeah mm -hmm. i've seen in the middle of winter someone shoveling the green and, and <laughs> i was like yeah, there are simulators you know <laughs> don't need to yeah. don't need to swing your club in the cold but 
Oh, people here at this club are diehards. Yeah, I believe it. It's a beautiful course to play at, and they they pay to be here and to, to do it, so it's... Do you golf? I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm not as good as I once was. In <laughs> high school, I was, you know, a 11 to 12 handicap. Mm -hmm. Now I'm more of an 18 to 19, but, you know, now I'm just happy if I go, I get a couple bars, a couple yeah. birdies. I don't care about the triples or quads. That's right. As long as I'm there to have fun. Not, don't take it too competitively anymore. Is this, it's a good hit and roll. Sticks around. They are being consistent. They're staying with the heavier weight. Yeah. Good adjustment by Ava. Probably gonna have a relatively same shot for her one point. Do you golf a lot? I do. Nice. Do you have a hole in one? No. no. Mary does. Yes, I, she told me that. That's unbelievable. I've been close uh, on the par three on number 15. I was about two inches away, but it's close, close is. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't golf. Matter. Yeah. It's the same as me. I've, I've been two two inches away twice yeah. at my home club in Seaforth, but, or home course, but. Something same as same like the eight ender it eludes me. I don't have that either. Neither, yeah. <laughs> uh oh. This needs to curl. Needs or we're going to see a blank end. Did T. Marco let them off the hook? Oh, she had that nice weight. Sticks oh, around. Yes. Forces T. Makers to take their one here in the seven. Yeah, it rolled into an interesting spot, too. She's not hitting, is she? She's, she's hitting. Ooh, yeah, how do you feel about it. that, Sam? Don't love it. Don't Maybe love it at all. I don't love it either. That is a really, uh, not for anything, that is a hard hit and stick back mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's any rock in the back 12 is tough to hit and it stick is. around. Um, and you just have to draw a full 12 foot. That's I right. Think. You have so much room here for a draw. Yeah. Oh, this makes me nervous. Yeah. If the scoreboard was a little different, maybe I would play the hit. If, it's, if you're winning, for you sure. You have to take but your one here. You here have you to make to sure score. you get one. Last rock here in the seventh end. A hit and stick needs to stay full 12 foot for her one point. Ava Akers. Big sweep to hold this. Excellent well, she, she made sweep. it look easy. She did. That was great sweeping. Yep. Well done. Team Akers makes the gap closer. It is a four to three lead for Team Markle. Team Markle having hammer in the eighth end and relatively full control of this game. Even though it's a one point game, they've really had control of most of the ends. Team Markle, so they're gonna look to continue to do that in the eighth. And we'll see how aggressive Team Acres becomes now. Yeah, double centers? Yeah, I would love double centers. Uh, As Darren Molden calls them, the double guns. The double guns, I like that. <laughs> I watch way too much curling. So do, so do I, but I tend to watch it on mute. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Sam. I know. As a commentator, I'm mean to other commentators. <laughs> I don't. It depends who's doing it. I would listen to Darren, obviously. Oh, I, so I very much funny. enjoyed Joanne Courtney at the Scotties. I thought she did a great job as well. But uh, some people I just choose to not. Sometimes I just don't like listening to them. <laughs> okay. I'll keep them nameless, though. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah, we won't, we won't be mean here. Okay, team makers had a little uh, team meeting. Yeah. meeting there. Look like they're pumped up. Maya's been making a lot of shots, and I think I, I would like to hope Ava's going to use that to her advantage. Throw the tight center, throw the one guard after that, and basically say game on. So Sam, when it's this tight and the, the uh, team that's down puts up the guards, how important is the first lead shot of the end? Of uh, it's basically like a win or loss. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost, this guard in the eighth end is almost as important as your guard in the tenth end if you need a steal to win. Um, and now with Team Marco's first shot, yeah. her shot is so critical too, but they are working hard to get it over. Oh no. Oh dear. Just an over adjustment. But you're right, this shot is very important as well. That's too bad. Yeah. Luckily, it's five rock rules. She yes. will get another chance. Yep.
but and she'll just have to ask her Isabella to make the other guard for her. They are cleaning the rock, so maybe they thought it picked. Yeah, it very well could have. It seemed to curl earlier than the other guards. But they did sweep head down right out of her hand, so I'm not 100% sure. Does, so it, it's a bad feeling just because it almost feels like you're chasing after the first rock right. at the end. Team Markle up one with Hammer, deciding to draw the back eight foot, back four foot weight. I don't mind it. Still think you need to put a center guard. Yeah. Love this call. Yeah, you have to. I was really worried there for a second. Yeah, a lot of times, and this is where maybe the strategy I call in the men's level is different than uh, U21 level, is that I will throw double centers all the way till vice is last, well, depending on not getting boxed out. But I also know that uh, my vice or my first rock, I can throw a, you know, a pretty quick hit and, and explode the end and make sure I can try and steal. Now that they're one point, uh, one rock behind, they're gonna need to make sure they don't get boxed out here because Julia's gonna go top four foot, I That's imagine. Great. So they were working really hard on that to get it mm -hmm. to the center line. I think for fear, if they did not, that the tick might have come. Yeah, maybe. So they got it there. Well, nice discussion there. Mm -hmm. Julia wanted to draw right on top of the yellow that's already in the rings. If you were up two or three. Sure. Sure. But you've already had one miss to send. Yeah. You get to peel on the very next rock. Well, yeah, I, I really like this call. Yeah. Like, she's going to get there first. Yeah. And... But I do like that they communicated about it. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, or a few years ago, the skip called the strategy. Yes. And and now more than ever, that has changed. Which I love. What, so do I. There's four brains out there. Use them all. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. That rock didn't quite curl enough, but does stay above T line, which is very important. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all four players need to know the strategy, uh, listen to the end goals. Um, depending on the team, who's the communicator on whether they don't like the call or not, and who goes down to talk to the skip and all that kind of stuff. But communication, obviously, very important. This is Bella. Playing the hit and roll, it looks like. Oh, wow. Another great sweep. Oh, what a beautiful shot. Couldn't make it any better. You know what I'm noticing, and I find this so interesting, because a lot of teams do it differently. They use both their sweepers to sweep. And when I was out in Calgary watching the Scotties, I noticed Team Ackerman also always used two sweepers to sweep. And they were so good with their hitting. And I think people underestimate, like, the women, if you can tandem it. Mm -hmm. Even that, I know the second sweeper is only like that 20% difference, but I honestly think it does help. I agree. I really do. I think when you look at sweeping in both the men's and women's, you look at other countries, you don't look at Canada. Right. Uh, because the best sweepers in the world are from other countries. <laughs> and on the women's side, you see a lot of the Asian Korean teams, they use that rep per second, trying to move their broom right. as quick as possible. They also use two sweepers Sweep, a lot. Yes. So uh, in my mind, they're some of the best sweepers on the women's side of curling yeah. and should be replicated. Yeah, I totally agree. And not for anything, like the cheerleading, mm. I can't do it. No. <laughs> Really, Lori? No, I just want to help. I want to get in there and help. I agree. <laughs> I needed this and they've rock had, to sit. Yeah, they've had so many good sweeps. I really noticed that. Mm -hmm. Really stood out to me that they've got the two sweepers going. They're making a lot of nice saves. That one, unfortunately, overcurled. Might have been a bit tight right from the beginning. Weight was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Darn. Yeah, Julia mentioned the peel, but like we talked about, what's your problem stone? Problem rock is that right now it's that rock in the top four foot. Totally, and it's fully accessible right yeah. now, so why not take a run, hit and roll, 
to the wing, and uh, then <laughs> Team Akers has a really tough decision to make. Yeah. Well, in my mind, my mind's made up. Are you playing to win? Well, this rock's over Oh, dear. Uh-oh. But in my mind, if they made the hit roll, are you playing to win or are you playing to have the game close? If you're playing to have the game close, you're going to hit and roll, probably give up two, maybe take two and, and then lose by one. But if you're playing to win, you would draw around the center guard. That's right. Now, they got a miss out of Scotia. Yeah, that's surprising. Because mm -hmm. that rock was fully open, so yeah. I'm not sure what happened to that throw. Inside the four-foot line, especially going towards sheet four. Agreed. Does curl quite a bit, but gives Team Akers an opportunity to make a better center guard than before. This stops. Over curls as well. Not as much though. Yeah, and it's a little tighter. Yeah, that guard's in a much better spot. Sure is. So you think now your problem rock is the guard still, so I mean yeah. they're both problem rocks, but try to make the run back if you could. Yeah, Evie liked it. And it is important to take the feedback from the thrower, so she likes it. I think what you have to be careful is you've got to make ensure if you don't make the run back that you roll away. Yeah. and not have that outcome. And, and, and Evie knows, and that's why she's a little frustrated, yeah. is that that's probably the worst outcome that's right. playing that shot. Well, and Not the tolerance, anyway. That's right. What happens here is it's just a lot easier to make a guard because you don't have to be as perfect because part of it's already done for you. So. And if a double peel isn't made on Ava's last rock, she can put this full eight foot half buried and sit two if they wanted to, you know, that's looking far ahead, but. And that rock is really hard to outdraw, so this is a huge opportunity for Team Akers to put some pressure on. Yeah. Mine's looking good. Yeah. He's a very good thrower, and I imagine she's going to be quite close on this double peel, though. A little bit of redemption for her. Yeah. Looks pretty close to half a rock. Yeah, would love to get both of them, okay? Rock's probably going to curl. Looks very close. Stuffed um, it. Stuck in between. You either make it the thin way or the thick way. And now that guard's in closer to the center line. Those are so tough to call. Yeah. Probably something that needs to happen a lot more in practice is really work on where you need to hit it and what is plan B. Mm. I agree. Same with communicating to the thrower where you need to hit it. That's right. When you're on a clock, you you know you can't go slide down, no. see exactly where you're hitting it, and slide back. You have to trust your skip and uh, know where you need to do and know what your plan B is, just like you said. So, chance for Ava to throw. I imagine a tight center guard. Now I really like on Ava's last if they can throw it top eight foot, half buried and sit two, or even the nose tap to the top button or something. Obviously they will discuss that. If a run back isn't made, that curls up just enough. That's a nice spot for it. I assume you're never drawing the top button right now. I wouldn't be. Yeah. That's what I figured. But like you say, she might be facing two on her last. It's a high probability. But pretty hard to put a draw anywhere in a good spot. So make the double peel, I guess, if you hit it. 
perfectly. That blue one could go towards the center. It could. Pretty close to a half a rock here for Julia. Markle's first stone in the eighth. They should have a really good idea. They just threw it. So hopefully Evie can make the line call here and get both moving. Pretty close. Need to roll that shooter away as well. It's the only issue, I mean, great double peel. Great shot. Uh, the only issue, now your draw path has kind of been taken away. Yep. So only negative about that shot, making it the thick way. That's why you probably would like it to make it over top of that blue one and get rid of everything. I'm being nitpicky, but these are two of the best teams here. And right. if they were to rewatch it, probably would know that. And with the double peel and the roll away, it does really make this draw, this guard, a lot harder. It's true. And more precise. Yep. You don't have as much room for error. And we have seen a couple over pearl mm -hmm. in this spot. Yeah, so. you're definitely glass half full. I was I glass am. half empty in this situation. But <laughs> you're right. If this guard isn't made perfect, you're going to have a shot for two. Yeah. So some pressure here on Ava Aker's last rock in the eighth end to put a really good guard on that very good shot in the top four. Yeah. Down one, you're always showing the guard here, though, in the eighth, right? Yes. I didn't even consider hitting no, that. I didn't even see it. It took me a second to go, what are you talking about? And then I went, oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. There was this another looks, option. Yeah, there was. This looks close. Needs to just Needs bite to the stop. center. Oh, that's a great shot. Great shot. Clutch. We said earlier, it's been Team Acres' B game yeah. for most of the time, and that is such a clutch shot when it matters the most. What are you throwing here, Lori? Well, I think because that is so hard to to get in for shot with a draw, I might be I might consider throwing that run through to get two. I think I'm always throwing the angle. Yeah. Run. Yeah. I kind of like it, yeah. and I feel like they've just thrown a couple down in this mm -hmm. spot. They yeah. should have a decent idea, but I, I, I'm I, assuming that's what they're playing? Not with the broom in the house. No? I'm, I think they're throwing the back line tap okay. for one through that hole. Ooh, that which stagger is making yeah, me uncomfortable. It's a very hard shot. And you have to tap it to the back eight foot yeah. and keep your rock in the four foot. Uh, very difficult. I like the angle run. I so do I, yeah. With this this rock's this shot's probably harder than the angle. Run. I think it is, especially yeah. with and the stagger the way it is. Yeah. I'm actually seeing the other turn if I'm making a tap. Yeah, I agree. I see the other turn more yeah. natural because a you have to maneuver the port. This is really close. Wow. It needs to curl. Oh, it's gonna gosh. get through the hole. Oh my gosh, oh, that my is close. Gosh. What an attempt. Seriously, that yeah, was that such was, a hard shot. That's such a good shot. Makes us look think, a little. I think we might have a measure. Will be a measure. Either way, incredible. Incredible. That's the best I think you could do. She just got by she, that she, outside yeah, rock. She just got by the outside one, had about wow. an inch of air on the inside with back 12 weight. Like, that's probably the best that, that she mm. could have done. So I gonna, still feel like it, it was probably there with the other turn. I agree. How much it curls there, yeah. for sure. Yeah, It I just do. looks so hard. Yeah, she made it look pretty yeah. easy. Good for her. <laughs> yeah, great shot. Both skips dialed in on their eight rocks this end. Waiting for the measure. This is such an important point it here. Is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Huge momentum swing if this is a steal of one. You tied the game here on even ends where if Julia ends up taking one here, huge momentum yes. boost on your eight rock. You know you can make almost anything at this point. Okay, if you oh. were to call it right now, oh, what do you think? Oh, man. It does kind of look like yellow. It does look like she made it. I sort of think the same, but I wouldn't be giving it away either. I'd be measuring No, you it. absolutely have to measure. They're doing it the right way. They're going clockwise. <laughs> They're pushing it forward. I've already seen a measure of someone pushing it backwards. Oh, interesting. It was a U21 male, not female. 
Oh, she pointed at blue, I think. But they didn't put the rock in toward I the know. button, so, so now we, I don't know for sure. Now we can't put the score up. Well, I guess we'll find out when I who goes in the hack. It did seem like she indicated blue, but yes, I'm not sure. Let's see body language. Who looks happier? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a guess. More often than not, I'm wrong in this, <laughs> and I picked yellow, so I imagine it was blue. <laughs> I feel like blue looks a little happier. <laughs> yeah, they do. Shoulders are up a little more. Who's sliding towards the hack first? I'm noticing that these in-between end talks are getting slightly longer. Are, are, are you are Now realizing? I'm understanding why the draws are a little <laughs> bit delayed. Yes, this is the downfall. It's not the, it's not the running time. No. It's the little meetings. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes, it is. That's the only downfall of this new setup with Agreed. the coaches. At national level, you get 30 seconds, I believe. Okay, so Here, Team I'm Akers sure did steal. And, and it's a steal, yeah. Big swing point. Tie game. It's kind of funny. On the stat sheet, Julia's going to get a zero for that shot. I know, and it was such <laughs> a close throw. It was like, such honestly. a good throw, and she gets Jeez. a zero. That's why it's unfair to be a skip sometimes. It is. Like, lots of fours, lots <laughs> yeah, of zeros. Yeah. Like you say, 50% might be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Depending what 50% you make, it's, it's how important it is. Maya hogged her first stone last end. It's a big sweep just to get it over this end, mm -hmm. and she does. And on the center line, well done. This ninth end is always make or break. I've seen a lot of teams going for a steal so hard that they give up four and oh, the game's yes. over. Absolutely. So Sam, ideally, where do you want to see this lead shot? Because I think this is the key shot of the end. It is. It's the most important shot of the end. So I would where love, do you want it? Right where Julia's broom is, almost full top four foot would be perfect in my eyes. Okay. They're working hard. Well, and, and you know, Lori, anything behind T-line is death. Yes. And so, any guard is not a good as well. So when exactly. we talk about tolerance, skips have no tolerance. Leads sometimes have no tolerance. Yeah. She has a three-foot window to be in. I agree. Now Ava calling the freeze. Yep. Tie game. I'd be tempted to throw another center guard, but mm. I'm sure with the long team conversation in between ends, yeah. uh, they that discussed guard is it. so high yeah. that I think no matter what you have behind it, it's accessible. So that's why I kind of think they need a tight guard here because that other guard is way too high. Yeah, it leads to a lot of blanks with that guard being as so high as it is. It, they inadvertently did what I yeah. thought they should. Uh, yeah, so let's see how it works out. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Key is not to panic. Like, yes. Last couple ends, this is the shot that Sadie has struggled a little bit with. It's the second one. She's made a great first one, hasn't made the freeze, either has left a double, thrown it through, or been light. So really yeah. important. If she can put this right on top of her first stone, they're going to be in a really good situation. I think the lead shots are so critical in the last, well, they're critical the whole game, but the last few ends, when the game is tight, oh my. Yeah. Cannot bounce on this angle. Nice well sweet. done. Yeah. Well done. Okay, what do you like here, Sam? Not the run back. Me neither. <laughs> I I like the back eight, back twelve tap. So follow her in yeah. just the way they came. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't like this. This call, like I said in the last end, this call makes me feel like you're playing not to to, to lose by a lot. You're playing to to lose by one. You're not playing to win. Playing to win, I. You, I think you have to play the tap, but who knows? She, she makes this perfect, and they're going to be sitting one yeah, berry. Yeah, I, I love it if you make it. Yeah. If you don't make it, I don't love it. Yeah. This needs to curl to touch a rock. It does. Be sneaky if it stays in the rings. Okay. Not oh. going to. But now, 
Julia can split the ring. She can draw top eight foot. Yeah. yeah. I love just following um, Team Merkel's rock down, tapping it, and sitting right there. I think that you can get a lot going with that situation. Yeah, that would have been, yeah, I agree. Interesting, I, I like the draw to the wing. Um, they mentioned the peel and they mentioned the draw around the center. Do you think the draw to the wing is still the shot A or? I think it depends who you're playing, obviously, yeah. but. Well, this is one of these funny situations. I don't hate taking two. Mm -hmm. If you can get a two, I hate taking one. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind the blank. Mm -hmm. So I think they're looking right now to split the rings, try to make sure they score at least two. This one's running a little bit deep. That should stick around. Yeah, that shot basically guarantees there's not going to be a blank. Exactly. So they're looking to get their two. Oh, interesting. Now they're thinking about the draw. Yeah, this is the tap, right? So they threw the run back before, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. they're throwing the tap, or the freeze tap. So flip-flopping and end goals a little bit. That's right. Isabella looks like uh -oh. this has been overthrown. Honestly, the way it was really quite good if you were playing a tap. But like, if you have max ice, yeah. That weight was perfect for yeah. the tap, you're right. Uh, if we're thinking half glass full, it stays third shot. Mm -hmm. Three quarters buried around yeah. the two yellows. Now what do you do for Team Would Marco? you ever just consider peeling the guard here? Uh, if you peel the guard, it's a nose double and then Team A gives a save three or two. But brings the blank into play. It does. That's the only thing I was kind of thinking. You could do the tap yourself. Or, yeah. Or, or draw to the top eight foot. Maybe create some space. I don't hate it. Yeah. I like it. Sitting three is hardly ever a bad choice. Especially because those two are both in front of the T line. You put another one in there, good. Like, honestly, what does tea makers do? Yeah. They, they are they, in so they're much in a trouble. lot of trouble. So I like this call. So do I. They want to make sure they have a third shot. Yeah. Even if you tap it, as long as you're sitting three. As long as you just don't tap it too heavy. Far. Yeah. 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 Looks great. That's a very good shot by Perfect. Scotia. Oof. Team makers is in trouble. I'm uncomfortable if I'm team makers. <laughs> yeah, right. So much. Uncomfortable. You almost have to make the 20 foot run back. I guess the corner freeze. Oh gosh. If you can freeze it in the pocket, the pocket of those rocks in the top four foot, and then slash it in maybe later. This is why the coach is having yeah. another. I wish. Uh, Maybe on the one that we talked about earlier, they might have called the interaction. Yeah, that was a big point in the end. Really the turning point. I think so. Yeah. Now I feel like it's too late. It's going to be very difficult to not give up more than two. I don't see anything other than the freeze, to be honest, for now. If you can corner freeze and then slash the corner freeze and get rid of two yellows. So I that or draw around all the yellows. Corner freeze on the eight foot one? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah. so dear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love it if you make it. Pretty this good feeling for Team Marco being tied with Hammer and your other team is throwing 20 foot eight. run back. And this, this, like that rock is just over the line. So this yeah. is, except so, it doesn't look that far a distance, 
but it really is. It's Russ Howard said it during the Scotties. It's a circle hitting a circle. <laughs> Very difficult to hit it right on the nose. It's close. Oh. It's going to touch one. Oh, well. that's, that's a pretty hey, good it's, outcome. It's better than it was. For a 24 run back. Pretty good. Well done. Now I like the peel. That yellow is lined up to the back blue one. I, I agree. Or you hit the black blue one, I guess. Yeah, you could. Hit, sit four. Now they're throwing the tight guard. So there you go. They have hammer and they're throwing a the center guard. Don't know if I love it. Don't know if I hate it. We're going to find out pretty soon. No more interactions, so. That's right. They're up to the, it's up to themselves. The only thing is you might be forcing Aker's hand to loop one around everything. Yes. If this guard is just touching center line, you're creating more space for team Akers. Exactly. To the heavy. They're calling heavy out of her hand. This needs to go. Make sure it's to the back one. Top eight's really bad. Can't be corner frozen here, Lori. No. Even that's not a great outcome. See three yellows fly pretty quickly, just off nose. We just finished saying Team Markle's probably scoring three or four. Wouldn't that be something yeah. if this shot gets made? Yeah. Big shot here for Isla. She's not throwing a ton of weight. Close to being really bad. <laughs> pretty good for not making it pretty good. If that curls another centimeter, you're. Yes. <laughs> Team Markle's sitting five. That's right. Four. Who's second shot? It does look like Team Markle. Mm. It's always tough, those angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I would have thought she'd throw a bit more weight at that one. I agree. If you're trying to move three stones. Great sweep to get the outcome that they had. Could've, oh, absolutely. That could have been, been really, bad. really bad. Now you just, I guess, draw to sit three. like a guard. It's a deep guard, but it's almost like a guard. I would hate to have to hit that stone because that double almost always jams into the Yeah, blue. I'm looking at do you ever hit the one on the left side of the screen as we see it and roll toward and try. Even if you can't get shot, but get second shot. Yep, I think you have to. I, I think that is your best outcome. Yep. I think if you can throw a lot of weight and punch the yellow that's in yeah. the top four to the other side of the top four, yeah. it'd be pretty tough to eliminate it. But yeah, I love it. Move it. It'd be a great use spot. that. Use that yeah. blue guard you have up there exactly. as well. Yeah, I think you have to hit and roll with. Love it. Probably as hard as she can throw it, though they're taking more ice than that. It looks yeah. like they must be throwing that control normal weight, but. But you're right. You could you could whip it. Make the double and sit right there. Yeah. Either way, a better situation than two, three rocks ago. So Ava has a chance. Hit and roll. Yeah. Roll right beside the yellow. Makes I, it difficult to I hit. I like that, yeah. honestly. I think this is a really good call. Yep, yeah, good. Ava Akers, first rock here in the ninth end. It is tied 4-4. Team Markle has hammer, sitting two. Oh, she 
just over curls. Too bad. Right idea, just maybe a little underthrown. Yeah, that's the lightest weight I've seen them throw for their open hits or their hit and rolls. They are still second shots. Yep, and buried. That blue one is not, yeah. you can't hit it unless you go yellow, yellow. Blue, yellow, yellow, blue, but. I think they're throwing the nose tap. like if you tap it to the top button you're guaranteed scoring mm -hmm. and you're sitting too buried I guess I would hate to set up a triple it's probably the only thing I don't like about the tap but. yeah this is a pretty good opportunity for team Markle put a lot of pressure on team makers on their last yeah you really don't love to give up a multiple man in this situation. You just, you just stole to tie the game. Just had the mo momentum yes. shift and now possibly could be giving up three. Don't want to tap this on an angle too much. Make the nose double and concede your two points? Yes. Well, they don't have much of that they rock. They don't have any of that rock. So nose the one on center nose line. On, the yeah. Nose the yellow on the center line. That's all I see. Give give them two. Yep. I mean, there are some harder shots that you can, you can make the nose tap on the blue. Yeah. Or the draw around the blue. Taps are really hard. Yeah. And they're always going to have that yellow run. Yes. Anyways. Yeah. No, I love I love that shot. Just yeah. Nose, nose, make the double. Hope, hope you might only get. They might only get one. She's ignoring everything. Wow. This is gutsy. I I, I I like the fact that she's playing it just because you know she's playing to win. Yeah. Draw full four foot. You might even steal. timer on this mm. but it really is against the game it that's is the only issue with this that's right a lot of pressure on this shot last rock for Ava Akers needs to bite the forefoot to be second shot needs to be full four to be shot rock Sweeper staying close. Not a good sign. Guess guard the easy tap, make Julia draw wide for three. Yeah. I don't know if that grabbed a fresh spot that or just yeah, really she light. So really far, maybe it just a little slower out there. Hard to say. Yeah. Darn. Hard to believe, you know, arguably the top two teams here and you miss 20 feet light and it's hard yeah, to believe that. that's so. right. So give her the benefit of the yeah, exactly. maybe a pick. So Team Markle, Julia Markle needs full eight foot, bite the four foot for three points. Half glass full, makes her make a wide draw. You can't draw to the top yellow. You won't, I don't think you'll be third shot. Be close. Yeah, it's close. Last rock here in the ninth end in a tie game. It is not 5-3, it is 4-4. Four, four. But Rob Matheson might not be listening to us right now. <laughs> Big shot here. Yeah, this is a huge extra point, honestly. They need to roll off that yellow, I think. Great sweep. Does she Looks get like it? they yes. got it. Big extra point. Will be three points for Team Markle. They go up seven to four after nine ends. Team Makers has hammer when we in the tenth. Wow, and to be honest, Team Markle are playing really well. They've controlled most of the ends. The reason why they have a three-point lead. But if this is the final on Sunday, this would be a treat to watch. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Team Eight. Team Akers will be really disappointed with that end. They really didn't make many shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that in for sure. Yeah. And it just kind of got away from them there. Unfortunately, just they were so close, stealing an eight to tie, and then yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. Game not over. We've seen threes multiple times, but. The ice makers won't be happy though. No, not <laughs> if not if they take three and there's an extra end and then we're here till midnight <laughs> on the men's draw. Do you have a, a bed here somewhere, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> and Rob must have a cot here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, so they do in the uh, compressor room. I think they have those um, lawn chairs <laughs> that I forget what they're called. Anti-gravity chairs. Oh, Thank you. I can sleep in that. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I hear it's nice and cozy down there. Probably warmer than in this room. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Sadie, really important to put this in the top four foot for Sadie. Yes, this really absolutely. just arguably shot that wins you the game. Great shot. No yeah. mistake there. Her two rocks were the reason why they took three in the last end. Yes, they so, were perfect. Yeah. In front of the tee, absolutely. Yeah really shows you why it's important to have a consistent lead. So throwing the center guard mm. down three. I like it. This is something new we've seen now mm. with the no tick rule. Mm -hmm. Do you find that people are ticking the corner guards in Sam? I haven't seen it in the U21 level. Uh, I've rarely seen it. It has happened in the men's and women's level. This needs to be over the hog line. And it is not. Unfortunately for Maya, she's had such a great game. But I've had two times in that same path. It's been late. Unfortunate miss there for Maya. Yeah. There are a couple rocks out here that are a little slow, so everybody needs to pay attention. If they think they're throwing it close, there are a couple. Yeah, you would think the ice maker would match the stones a little closer, but <laughs> he is here. In the room. He's here. That's why Sam. I get to Sam's bug Rob a little him. bit. But that rock coming up a little light in the top 12 foot staggers the yellows a little bit where maybe later in the end, uh, team makers can draw around to the back 12 foot. I know, anytime I see a stagger, I really think it's a good opportunity. It is, I agree. This could be the over adjustment. This needs to stay above Yeah, the that's ranks. what I'm wondering. I think she might have a mismatch pair, honestly which the leads get now in the five yes. rock rule. So it is a skill set you need to have is A, identify it, and B, figure out how to adjust yeah. it. Little miscommunication there. You're throwing the center guard with hammer to be on the center line so you, they can't take it. Right. And that rock isn't on the center line. And they've had room to curl it, so. Surprising they're not trying it. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's scared she'd give them two corners. Fair. Curious on Sadie's second one. Since she put the first one in such a perfect spot, I would throw the second one through. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah. Absolutely. We've seen it in the men's tank, Ontario Tankard. Uh, Briar final. And the Briar final. In uh, oh, yeah. Mark Dacey won. Yep. Yep. I was thinking this year, Marquine had that four point lead. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. And uh, threw guy. three rocks in the top four foot that only helped. Team King by taking four and stealing and then making I, it all the way to the final after I've that. I've watched that end a couple times yeah. just to understand what happened and yeah, too many rocks. Too many rocks in play. Up yeah. four, up three. Yeah. Put your one rock in the top four foot, throw it through. Yeah, once you get that perfect spot, yeah. if you get it on your first one, you don't need any more in no. there. Every other rock just helps the opposing team. Yes, totally agree. So there you go. But you're right, many games have been lost because of that, so. Mm -hmm. They're calling the tap, I like it. Tap sure. and roll under, maybe create a pocket. You, you need to get some of these moving behind the T-line. Yeah. The 
Yeah. Because they're in some trouble. Cer here. Yeah, they are. Certainly the game's not over, but they're going to need some misses out of Team Marvel yeah. to score their three points. Yeah, needs needs to jiggle all these around. Yeah. This one running a little straighter on yeah. them. Yeah. Well, that extra wave, right? Yeah, it It'll always take does. a different flight path. <laughs> yeah. Sticks around, which is good. There are two blues in play. Ooh, I would love to peel the center, and if you redirect into the rock and the rings, you win the game. Again, throwing that extra draw, the hit and roll makes no sense either. You're just giving more rocks for, That's right. for the other team to play with. Just peel it out. Peel it you, out. You don't. You don't need to stick around. Same with. That's why I like peeling the center. You peel the center guard, sure. it almost always rolls to the other blue one in the rings. Pretty close. Team Markle just looking to eliminate any blue stone that's in the rings. Does a great job. Perfect. Scotia listen to us. Yes. Hit and roll down. Good. Do you draw to the back 12 now? I know it's a hard shot, but... That stagger is kind of helping you a little it bit. It is. At this point, it's acting as a guard. Yeah. I know it's only Vice's last, but, or second's last, Isabella's last rock, but. Tempting to go to the back 12 here. Looks like they're playing the freeze, though. It's to curl. Looks pretty close, though. Great. Call the maid. It's pretty well thrown. Hard to argue that point. Yeah. Do you play the peel? Get rid of the yeah. guard? Yeah. I. She's got a. She still has a lot of work to do. Yes. Yeah. I like the peel. I like the peel as well. Arguably, you could probably eliminate that blue stone, but it's hard. You have to throw a lot of weight, and you very well could just make the double on your yellows and blue would be sitting one if you don't make it perfect. Well, so if you don't do this peel. properly, you might help them make something. Yeah, so okay. Evie peels. Perfect. Do you, I still like the draw to the back 12 foot, but you could freeze to the yellow in the corner or yes. the corner guard, one of the two. I'm seeing the freeze on yeah. the one I like on the eight foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot as well. Freeze there, they're gonna try and eliminate. Yes. Freeze another one Freeze there. Freeze another one. Yeah. Maybe if you can still draw to the back 12, if that opportunity's still there, do that. So I'd like a coach interaction here. Yes, would I. Because I don't love this call. No, nope, you're grouping your stones. Right. This needs to be made perfectly for it not yeah. to be easily eliminated. I have to say though, for this age group, it's so impressive how much they know. They know so much that yeah. when I was their age, I had no They're, clue. They are so much better than us than ah. when, we were, when we were 20. Or well, these, some of these girls are 17, 18, 19. So. I was uh, telling somebody the other day, I never even had the opportunity to go to a curling camp until I was 25. Wow. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's crazy. There was just nothing. There was yeah. no opportunities. So... These athletes are so fortunate. They get such good coaching from such a young age. They know so much more strategy. Back when we were that age, there was one one event on TV. Like the yeah. ladies, uh, for the ladies, it was the Scotties. For the men, it was the Briar. Yeah, ours. maybe maybe the juniors were shown as well. But it just wasn't a ton of, yeah. of games on TV. No. Not a lot of learning no. happening. But now with all the streaming and all the television coverage. Like the, what the game has evolved a, a lot in the last 20 years. Oh. Yeah. A good peel by Evie. She did her job. Yes. Yeah, this is when you just start counting down the rocks yeah. if you're Team Markle. Yep. Yeah. So trying to attempt the freeze again. You could lock it on to perfectly. Could end up being a really good shot. It's just a little bit harder than the other freezes that we talked about. That's the only reason. Mine looks pretty close. Not quite. Yeah. 
Now, tough to peel, technically, with that yellow in the mm -hmm. top eight foot. Don't love. What about the nose double? I think you just try and nose it. But we're gonna have our first coach's interaction of the last stand here. For all you listeners who are excited for the men's draw tonight, we have Team Hastings versus Team Benning on our featured sheet. Team Benning sitting at one and two, Team Hastings at 0 oh and three. That three losses is really the max you need to have. So basically a must win for Team Hastings. But you can look at it the same way for Team Benning. So that'll be an exciting game. It is supposed to be scheduled at eight o'clock. So you can see it's 7.40 and they still need to do the ice. So probably end practice. That game time's probably not gonna be until at least 8.40. That will be our last draw of the night. It's our men's draw. Update you on the other sheets. Team Langford has a 7-5 lead after eight ends over Team Daigle. Team O'Coin has a 7-3 lead over Team Parkinson. And Team Johnston up 5-3 over Team Madden. Team Madden has Hammer in the 10th. Some close games coming down the wire. Lori looks like they decided to peel towards that yellow in the edge of the eight foot. Don't love it. Where would you have to hit it to perfectly jam it, Sam? Looks like half a rock's pretty close. So as long as she hits a third. Yeah. Or if you hit it right Thicker. there, you do okay, that. Okay, never a doubt. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, good thing they said, whoa, heads up line call yes. by Evie. If they Great don't, line call. they sweep that the whole way, they're jam. And three's in play. That's right. Now, three's still in play. The perfect freeze that they're motioning, or the draw to the back 12 foot. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever preference. preference. They've thrown this path multiple times already. So I like the freeze now, since they already kind of know it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're looking for a miss anyways. Yes. I guess the only wish issue with the freeze is if it's made perfectly, you'll probably see Julia just guard. Which Very is true. Because both of these last two blue stones need to count. Interaction? Well, that's a late interaction call. Sure is. Don't love that. I would <laughs> she was just about ready to throw. Yeah. I guess they have tons of time on their clock. <laughs> I don't know. I I think either way, if she draws back 12 foot or if she freezes, yeah. Team Markle's probably discarding. I would agree. I don't think you have any other option, though. However, they don't have any interactions left. It's true. So. It's true if they don't think of the guards, which mm -hmm. sometimes you don't always think of it. So. Looks like handshakes on the sheet next door. Yeah, not sure the outcome. Team Mata needed to take three to win that game. Oh, look, they put the clock on the screen. Oh, nice. I like that. That's new. What production we have here. Yeah, I'm so impressed. Yeah, really, really good. It looks like they decided on the draw to the back 12 foot. Mm -hmm. Either that or they're just taking a new path for their freeze, but that would be weird. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I think they're playing the come around everything. Yeah. So she tried this in the last end on this side of the sheet. It was very light. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious to see how she throws this rock. Yeah, I agree. Looks like a tight line out of her hand. Be a situation. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and freeze now. Pretty late, Needs to be in the rings at least. It is. Yeah, I had a 15-4, and if you had a 15-5, in the 10th end, that's, gonna, that's light. That is. That, yeah. that is. 
because normally if it's about a 15 to start, it should be about a 14.5 by now. Yeah, which would be pretty close. Yeah. So and for back 12, you're probably aiming closer to a 14, 14.2 right. um, in a path that hasn't been thrown a lot. So difficult shot, and the outcome obviously isn't amazing because now they need a zero from Julia, who hasn't thrown a zero yet this game. Last rock for Julia Markle needs to make a blue disappear for the win to stay undefeated. Just needs to peel it out. No mistake there. Team Markle takes the win of the Battle of the Undefeated, goes to 3-0. and Team Ava Akers goes down to 2-1. and I don't think this is the last time these two teams play, but a lot of provincial left. Lori, thank you for joining me to oh, this evening. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I've appreciated it. Thanks to Showworks for putting on the live stream. We'll be back for the men's draw tonight at around 8.30 to 8.40. Thanks for joining us. curling. From its humble 16th century Scottish origins to its current status as a loved Canadian pastime, it has become a sport that can connect us together. Even as COVID tried to separate us, we didn't let that stop us from pursuing the joy of watching the rock travel down the sheet. Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club, we want to be a place you can come to build those bonds. Our state-of-the-art facility, diverse dining options, and friendly staff are here to create the perfect atmosphere for you to enjoy the sport you love and to connect with others who share our passion for curling. Developing connections, fostering experiences, making friendships. Dundas Valley Golf and Curling Club.